Okay, good morning all. Uh, you're very welcome. Thanks very much for joining me. I hope you're well today. It's actually quite a nice day here in Hartlepool. A sunny morning, so I think a uh, walk on the beach with the dogs fairly soon is required. Before I get on to some Hartlepool, <clears throat> excuse me, Hartlepool related news this morning, I want to have a quick look at some national news and what's dominating the national headlines this morning. From the BBC, it's top story this morning. Bring back rules amid rising cases, urge NHS chiefs. Let's have a look. Some COVID restrictions must immediately be reintroduced if England is to avoid stumbling into a winter crisis. Health leaders have warned. The NHS Confederation said a backup strategy or plan B, which includes mandatory face coverings in crowded and enclosed spaces, should be implemented. UK cases have been rising, but deaths are well below the winter peak. Business Secretary Kwasi Kwarteng said it was not time for plan B and urged greater uptake of booster jabs. The lower hospitalisation and death rate compared to January showed that this virus, this is a virus we are learning to live with, he told BBC Breakfast, and he did not want to jeopardise hard-won gains of reopening the economy and returning to a more normal life. I don't want to go back to a situation where we have lockdowns, he said. I don't want to inject inject any hint of complacency, but I do think so far our, appro our approach is working. Okay. Booster jabs. We knew this was coming. There have been, remember this, we went from three weeks to flatten the curve to jabs, second jabs, variant after variant after variant, lockdown, open up, lockdown, open up, local lockdowns. We're talking about these things again. Now we have booster jabs. And here's the thing, for every booster jab, more money for big drug companies, more money for GPs administering. These GPs are paid separately to administer COVID jabs. And importantly, and this isn't being mentioned certainly not being mentioned in the press, but it's not been mentioned by many commentators either. And that is that every single winter, there is a crisis in the NHS. Everyone. All you have to do is a simple Google search on... I've, I've Googled a few different things. NHS crisis, just, in, just Google that. Year after year after year after year. I've gone into this in some detail previously, but year after year, there is a crisis in the NHS every single winter. Now here's, there are crises in the NHS. It's the worst at the moment that I've known it. But the crisis is because it's so badly run. We can't keep running away from this reality. It is not being run properly. And I know this for a few reasons. One, because I worked on it for a long time. But two, because winter comes around every single year. There's always a winter. And yet somehow... Every single winter, the NHS seems to be caught off guard. Oh, no, there's a winter again. How does this happen? Every year, there's a crisis. 
if you look back, you'll see 2016, the worst year in NHS history. 2015, crisis in the NHS. Goes on and on and on. Every single year. The problems in the NHS are these. It is run by several layers of bureaucracy. They are not medical people who run it. The bureaucrats. The money is never ending. Politicians just promise more money to the NHS. That's what they do. So the money is never ending. So when you have an endless supply of money, you tend to be less careful with money. It also encourages, sadly, self-interest. And these layers and layers of management will use that endless supply of public money, your money, to fatten their own bank accounts. And that is exactly what they do. It's also a political vehicle and it's being used for politics. You'll have climate change advisors and diversity this and diversity that. Massive salaries. And then no money for certain treatments. That's how it's been run. Endless supply of money will encourage laziness and self-interest. No accountability for incompetence. None. If NHS management waste millions of pounds of public money, they're not fired for it. They're given more public money. So they can waste that as well. That's how it works. Political parties, no interest in talking about this. None. It's just, let's give it more and more and more money. That's why the NHS is in crisis. But we, instead of dealing with that, the reality, the true problem, the true issue, instead will threaten. And the language of the business secretary here is threatening language. We don't want to go into lockdown again. It's threatening us. It's that ever-present danger of destroying the economy, destroying society, destroying our daily lives, that ever-present danger that they exploit to try to get us to do what they want. That's coming back now. We, we Masking, all that stuff, going to come back. This, it feels like, it feels like this is never going to go away. Is this pattern just going to repeat and repeat and repeat? And, and a method of control. You have to do this or the NHS will be in crisis. We have to control your everyday life or the NHS will be in crisis. Meanwhile, it is they, the very same people who are controlling us, who have caused the NHS to be in crisis and who won't deal with the real crisis in the NHS. Instead, they'll use it to impose even greater control on the people. That's what's really happening. Okay, let me go to some local news. Similar and related mismanagement. Poverty. Pledge for, it's a headline this morning, pledge for action to halt soul-destroying and heart breaking flood of poverty in Hartlepool. Councillors have stressed talking to people impacted by poverty must be at the heart of an investigation into abuse, into the issue. Members of the Hartlepool Borough Council Audit and Governance Committee are continuing with an investigation into child poverty in the town as part of their work programme for the year. At the latest meeting, they received presentations on the topic from the Joseph Rowntree Foundation and Thrive, a Teesside charity, to help guide and inform their research. Okay, so 
massive poverty problems in this town. And a third, latest figures I can find, a third of children in this town are living in poverty. Now, the local council is doing an investigation into poverty. And once again, as I say this all the time, uh, every week I'll say it again, the, all of these issues are repeatable and, and happen in towns and cities all over the country. This also happens in towns and cities all over the country. There's a problem, a huge problem, significant problem, a real problem, poverty. That's a problem. It's a real problem. We shouldn't have these levels of poverty in Great Britain. We simply shouldn't. This country is still quite well off. It's just that the money we have is misspent. So we've got a real problem, poverty. The local government carries out an investigation and most likely will produce a report because that's what they do. They investigate and produce a report. That's the extent of the governance. And this again, repeated all over the country. Actual steps, actual brave moves to tackle that poverty, such as job creation, lower taxation, etc., spending public money on children. Last week I told you about how children's health services are being cut. That's a misspending of money. Actual brave moves to tackle poverty are not undertaken for the simple reason that they are brave. You would need to be brave, principled, and really care to make some of the moves that need to be made to actually end or reduce this poverty. So instead, they'll carry out an investigation and produce a report. That's what we do. And by the way, that's also what bureaucratic, wasteful, left-wing societies do. They appoint committees, and then they appoint a subcommittee, and then they appoint another subcommittee, and then they have a meeting, and then they have a meeting about a meeting, then they have a meeting about a meeting about a meeting, then they produce a report, and then they produce a report about the report. And all the while the poverty gets worse. All the while the taxes go up, council tax going up again. This is what we're governed by. And until we have people who actually give a damn, this is what we will continue to be governed by. You need courage to make decisions in the best interests of the people you represent. Those decisions won't always be easy. You will get flack for it, you will get criticism for it. That's part of leading. That's part of putting, of representation of the people is taking criticism, taking flack and making tough decisions in the interests of the people you represent. But we don't do that. We have meetings and produce reports and investigate and then produce another report. All of which, by the way, is costing money. Money that could be used to alleviate the poverty. This is common sense stuff. I sometimes wonder what ever happened to common sense. How can you be, how can you be so lacking in sense as to spend money trying to figure out how to save money? Why don't you save the money? This happens in the health service as well. Management consultants. Paying out six figures to external consultants to tell them how to do their job, paying out six figures to ex external consultants to tell them how to save money. And, and that's not a joke. That's genuinely what happens. Let's pay this person a lot of money so they can tell us how not to waste money. Incredible. Incredible. 
And it just carries on and on and on and on. Here's a related story. Hartlepool councillors sick to the stomach over impending budget cuts. So here's another. Here we go again. So on one hand, what are we going to do about the poverty? So we'll have an investigation. On the other, let's cut our budgets, increase taxes, and try to reduce our deficit. So taxes are going up, local taxes, council taxes are going up. And there will be no, at the same time, services are being cut. So what is the increase in tax going to pay for? It's going to pay for a reduction in the deficits that this same council has built up. It's unbelievable. It's literally unbelievable. Well, it would be unbelievable to people who had an ounce of common sense, which I'm not entirely sure is the case. Related article, Hartlepool gets nearly, well, <laughs> give me a break. Hartlepool gets nearly one million pound from the government to help needy over winter. Council bosses are being given nearly one million to help households most in need with the cost of daily essentials. This is part of a £500 million government scheme, the Household Support Fund, announced earlier this month and designed to last throughout the winter. A third of kids in this town are living in poverty. A million pound. By the way, a million pound will pay for just about, actually, it won't. It's over a million pound is how much it costs for the unelected chiefs that make all the decisions, that have put the town into a deficit of 7.523 million. So we're getting a million pound. There's a deficit of 7 million. The salaries of the not unelected chiefs is over a million. And still, nobody. we'll have to have an investigation into poverty. Let's investigate what's going on here. We know what's going on. Just told you. You don't need to pay me to investigate. I could tell you this for free. You're wasting money, siphoning off money to put in your own pocket, increasing taxes to pay off deficits that you ran up. That's what's wrong. There's your problem. No need for an investigation whatsoever. There you go, free. No reports, no meetings. You don't have to sit around wasting public money to figure out What's going wrong? I've just told you. You know why they do this, of course? Why they do this reports and investigations? To look like they're doing something. That's all it is. It's a theatre. It's a stage show. We have to look, oh, look, look at all the poverty. Let's investigate. The investigation won't find, however, the truth. Because the truth is they're the ones wasting the money. They're the ones causing these problems. So an actual investigation would reveal that they were the ones causing this problem. So instead, the investigation will show something else entirely. It'll blame someone else. If it's Labour, they'll blame the Tories. If it's Tories, they'll blame Labour. And it'll we've got round in circles we go. That's how it works. It's quite simple. That is how it works. And as for this £500 million government scheme, to help people through the world. Give me a break. 500 million pound, really? And how many millions, uh, <laughs> how many, how much have you spent on illegal immigrants in the same time frame? 500 million pound is a pittance from the national government. And you consider how much, it will, do I need to say 14 billion in foreign aid? 500 million. For the whole country to get them through the winter, which extremely difficult winter. 14 billion for someone else, 500 million for British. Great, thanks. 
Okay, another story up this morning. Plea to improve women's safety by lighting up Hartlepool Railway Bridge. Councillors are calling for improved lighting under a bridge to help residents feel safer. This is another example of politicians, useless politicians, doing nothing while desperately trying to look like they're doing something. There is a huge problem in the co- the whole country with violence against women. And do you know why? Now, I'm not suggesting Hartlepool Council can do much about this. But do you know why there's such a huge problem with violence against women in this country? Because the police are ridiculously bad at dealing with these crimes. We've been covering up crimes against young girls, for example, for decades, because it wasn't politically correct to prosecute. Even when they are prosecuted, the judiciary is also ridiculously inept, complicit in this. Complicit. The judiciary will give a far smaller penalty for violence against women than it will for, I don't know, fraud, maybe. Drug dealing. Much higher penalty for that than for violence against women. Politically incorrect offences will often get you tougher punishment than violence against women. That's the problem. Again, I don't, I'm not charging for this, by the way. So the Home Office can carry out a million reports and spend public money investigating why there's so why there's such a big problem with violence against women. I can tell you right now. You've basically licensed it. You may as well, I mean, with the way that the the way the grooming gang scandal unfolded, you may as well just Tell these men they can do what they want. If you don't punish them, then that message is is received loud and clear. The reason there's a problem is not lighting under bridges. I'm nothing against lighting under bridges. Put the lighting under the bridge. The problem is there is no law and order. There's no justice. A problem, and if you look at, at one of the most notorious cases recently... This policeman, Wayne Cousins, who murdered Sarah Everard, he had red flags all over him. He should never have been in a police uniform. But he was. And the police covered up for him and and let him get away with all sorts. And he went on to murder Sarah Everard. And then they learned, well, how can this have happened? It happened because you let him get away with things over and over again. He's a microcosm of society. You let them get away. You let these predators and rapists get away with this over and over and over and over again. The message is received. They'll carry on. That's the reason for violence against women. That's the reason you have a problem with violence against women. They're free. No need, pretty Patel, no need. You're welcome, by the way. No need to spend millions of pounds on, of public money trying to figure this out. I've just told you. Okay, back briefly to the NHS. There are There is a campaign going on uh, at the moment, which I have just joined on Facebook, to... Build a £380 million super hospital in Hartlepool. I hope it goes ahead. Uh, I will be joining the campaign for that because there is no hospital. There's a hospital, but um, it doesn't have an a and There's a need, and there's a need for a new hospital in the northeast. And Hartlepool is pretty much the only place in the northeast of its size without an A&E, for example. 
but some of the arguments made and they are good ones. And again, there's common sense here. So Glenn Hughes of Fighting for Hartlepool, Hartlepool Hospital said, the hospital Hartlepool sits on a lot of land, is a newer building and easy transport to the A19. Why go to the length of buying another piece of land to build a hospital? It's the, you know, thank you, Glenn, bless you for your common sense. Just bless you. Extend what you have rather than buying more land. Common sense. Okay. Another story, Hartlepool's Fire and Rescue Service commits to tackling modern slavery and human trafficking. What a utterly depressing headline. There's a new uh, anti-slavery and human trafficking campaign, for want of a better word, being uh, launched by the by Cleveland Fire Brigade. All right, to finish, I'm going to finish on something slightly less depressing. Uh, and I won't be here next week. And the reason I won't be here next week is I'm traveling to London on Tuesday and I will be traveling back from London on Wednesday morning. So I won't be here for a live stream next week. So that means that the next live stream will be the 3rd of November, which is post Halloween. And in view of upcoming Halloween, which I love, I've always loved Halloween. Um, I finish with this story. The spooky Hartlepool pub where unusual events happen almost every week. Unexpected reflections and people hearing their name being called when there's nobody else around. These are just some of the extraordinary events experienced by staff at a Hartlepool pub. But despite it all sounding a bit spooky, David Clark, manager of the Duke of Cleveland in Church Walk, has said the events have never been a bother. David said the occurrences usually happen on an evening when staff are closing up the pub. He said, it's a weird place. It's not a negative vibe. It's a really nice atmosphere. Uh, there's a big mirror in the hallway. And once I looked in there and something caught my eye, I saw the reflection of a pregnant lady stood on top of the stairs. Straight away, I turned and looked at the stairs and no one was there. There was nobody in the room. I didn't know how to feel. I thought someone was pranking me. Uh, he said, when you are pulling up on a night, sometimes you can see people in the window, but there's actually nobody in the building. There's not a week goes by where something doesn't click with someone. The uh, Duke of Cleveland is at pub and there is on the, 34, on the 30th of October, a paranormal investigator is doing a walk around the Duke of Cleveland. I've had a look and apparently it's all sold out, unfortunately, but the Hartlepool Art Gallery is doing some painting and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you actually just in case. Um, I just said, so on the 29th of October, the Hartlepool Art Gallery is running Haunted Houses session where people are encouraged to these are free. People are encouraged to come along and draw and paint haunted houses in the area. It sounds, um, sounds great, actually. Sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, that's it, everyone. Thanks very much for, for joining me this morning. Um, as I say, I'll be back in two weeks' time, 3rd of November. Have uh, Look after yourselves until then and uh, enjoy Halloween. I will. I, I love Halloween. And I know exactly what I'm going to be wearing when I answer my front door to trick or treaters. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. See you in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, of course, I'll be back with my normal Monday night live stream. Uh, if you happen to be watching this in London, next Tuesday night, London branch, I'll be there. Ed will be there. Please do come along if you can. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot. Take care. See you soon.